power of persuasion? How long does it last? Till the person does what I tell them to do. It could be two minutes, two hours. And then they come out of it without a memory. What happens if they can't do what you want? They keep trying, unless they're forcibly snapped out of it like your friend Whitney. Well, it sounds good in theory, but uh, how about you prove it? Chloe. What? The guy lives in a crappy trailer out in the woods. You think if he has this power, he'd use it to sell some of these sculptures? It's dangerous. I'm used to living on the edge. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Bring that over here. What's that? Saucy, isn't it? And vulgar. Yes, isn't it? Come on, get me out of this. Julie, what are you doing? If it fits me, I'm going to wear it to the Olympus Bowl. A red dress to the Olympus Bowl while you're out of your senses. Mademoiselle Jeanne-Fille portes une robe comme ça. D'ailleurs, c'est une robe de cette Marie Vicaire. That creature, Julie. You heard what Madame Poulain said. That infamous Vickers woman. Mary Vickers couldn't possibly do it justice. Child, you're out of your mind. You know you can't wear red to the Olympus Ball. Can't I? I'm going to. This is 1852, Dumplin. 1852, not the Dark Ages. Lost count on these things. Great job tearing up hell. Thanks. I need you to stop. What? Do you really think Satan could still be thinking about Jezebel's wedding after all the damage you've done? I'm telling you, the devil is about to react in a big way. And when he does, we need to be ready. Satan didn't have much time to react to the war Gat was waging. Because at home, Jezebel was waging a war of her own. I don't love them! You think I care? If you started acting like a father, you would. I'm looking after your best interest. You don't care about my happiness! This is about you! If you just stop telling- You will marry that saint, and I won't hear another word! I won't do it! You think because you're my daughter, you think that you're above it all. But schemes are currently in motion. Your choice, be a wife or be a thrall. They say the devil's in the details, and I have some more for you. Celestial light doesn't shine a ray here. Happy endings are through. I'm giving you away. Your blood will not save you. My hand will be cruel if you disobey. You belong to me. Hello, beast. Who's this? This is my dear friend Martha, the Salisbury Crowley. How do you do? Eat, drink, be happy. What dancing, Martha? Not my thing. What is your thing? Oh, everyone has a thing. My thing is love. That's not very satanic. On the contrary, Satan is love. In your heart, you worship Satan just as I do. Every beautiful woman does. simper around in white just because they're not married. In New Orleans they do. Julie, you'd insult every woman on the floor. Mademoiselle, your aunt, she's right. Look how beautiful this dress is. Will you kindly get me out of this? Julie, you can't be serious. Never more serious in my life. But Julie, think of press. That's just exactly what I am thinking of. The Matrix is a system, Neo. That system is our enemy. But when you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters. The very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system, and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, 
most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system, that they will fight to protect it. You have feelings for Clark, don't you, Chloe? You see him, and you want him. All this time, you've been hiding it. Now you can show him. Okay, come on. I'm ready. What? Why are you looking at me like that? And why is my mouth minty? Let's just say he proved his point. Were you listening to me, Neo? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? I was... Look again. We are all shapeshifters. We are all lonely drifters. we forgotten ours when we escape through the winking eyes and the secret handshake. Never. I'm sick of perdition, so tired of tradition, but now my time has come to go break away, to live for today, to stand out beneath the sun. I know there has to be some way for me to be free, just living a life that's far from the strife and torture is And that is the infestation of the Jezebel spirit of narcissistic manipulation and subversion in the lives of a growing number of people. And its traits can sometimes be found also in men, but this spirit, according to the Bible, is more common in women. And we can hardly be surprised at its increase due to the huge amount of propaganda that encourages this type of behaviour. These trends in our modern day society are leading towards the ultimate agenda of the demasculinization of men whilst nurturing a false and counterfeit masculinity in women. The traditional male is being shunned, whilst propaganda to enable this type of behaviour in women within the realm of the Jezebel spirit and its traits is being pushed Okay, so the idea of this video is to help people who find themselves caught in this situation. In particular, uh, this goes out to the men out there, but as I said, this isn't a flesh and blood battle. Primarily, this is a spiritual battle. So we're not talking about individuals necessarily, but this may have come into your life in a spiritual way before. And ultimately, here we're looking at the social, psychological and spiritual paradigms of, of this behaviour. You've got the, the Jezebel spirit, the person being used by this Jezebel spirit, 
Well, first and foremost, you enter into a, a relationship with them uh, and you form some kind of tie. You form some kind of tether with this individual. And that can be called a soul tie. Very often with this type of person, it will be an extremely deep reaching soul tie. And that's part of the whole thing. So the, the paramount reason for this is that they put you into a safety or security box. And that requires your submission. So in speaking of the modern day agendas, just hypothetically here, the Jezebel, the lady, the Jezebel woman here, puts you as the man into a box. So you end up, and she wants you to submit to her. And the reason she puts you in the safe zone is so that she has a guaranteed supply. In the narcissistic sense, it's all about psychological, psychic vampirism. And it's about having a an easy source of supply to be fed psychologically with whether it be attention or whatever usually keeping you in that box requires quite a few tactics and I'm not going to cover all of them here but I'm going to show you a few of them and you might relate to them and one of them is mind games so keeping you in a sense of confusion playing mind games with you another one would be push and pull hot and cold and idealize and discard <clears throat> so the idea of this so say with push and pull and hot and cold it's like needing a bit of dough so they give you loads of attention then take it away they give you loads of admiration then take it away uh, idealize then discard they'll they'll make you feel like you are the, the on top of the world that you are number one in all existence and then they'll take that away in the next breath so it's pushing and pulling it's a form of keeping your attention, making you addicted. And it, as I said, it's like kneading a piece of dough back and forth until they, they make it into the shape that they want it, which is ultimately you fully focused on them and fully serving them. And the ultimate agenda, the, the shape they want to make out of that dough, so to speak, is this submission another form of keeping you in this box is gaslighting now gaslighting is by definition selectively spinning information or events or scenarios that happen selectively spinning them or omitting parts of them in order to keep you confused so say you, you think you you think you perceive something you're, you're almost adamantly sure that you perceived something in a certain way that you saw it and you're 99% sure then they will spin that they will spin that to make you doubt your very own perception in the end by the end of it to doubt your very own perception to doubt yourself as much as possible to keep you in this box <laughs> The new number five, Chanel. So gaslighting is basically twisting the truth or twisting stories just to further elevate this sense of confusion and bewilderment and disillusionment so that you remain trapped, just lost in absolute bewilderment. Another form of keeping you in there is sexual temptation. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, really. 
sexual, especially with guys, uh, not not just guys, but sexual temptation, a big thing that may keep someone trapped in that box. So to them, fully knowing all these things, you know, knowing what they're doing, by the way, knowing that they're doing this, you know, everyone has traits of sin in them, but when we when we're speaking about a, a narcissistic personality disorder this is all that individual would be about when it's a personality disorder carrying on um another form is to undermine or insult the reason being for undermining and insulting well insulting obviously it, it le lessens your self esteem to insult but to undermine would be to take away the validity of your opinion even if someone's going to undermine everything you believe in or undermine everything of your character then you're not going to have the same grounds or strength to stand against this subversion of you into their box into their trap so you lose your confidence you lose your strength to climb out and that, that further increases low self-esteem and insecurity. So another one would be to depersonify and to mirror. So when you depersonify someone, again, you're, you're taking away their character. And if you're mirroring them, you're copying them. So in, in a sense, you're extracting all that they have. You're extracting who they are, who they believe they are, who they've grown up to be, that, and they, their talents or gifts or whatever, you're, you're essentially extracting that and stealing that from them. You're mirroring them. So they're no longer unique. They're no longer a unique person. And also another way that this spirit will do it is that they will project themselves onto you or they, by mimicking you, by mimicking your traits, you actually would would start to fall in love with what you see in the mirror if you catch my drift you actually start you would actually start to fall in love with your own traits that they are mirroring because someone who is totally consumed by this Jezebel spirit or by narcissistic personality disorder they don't really have much to show for themselves as they are almost an empty vessel and it's a very strange one to comprehend and I'm going to do another video on this afterwards in the future a, a bit more about how and why the, the inner core is so empty from y years of abuse or, or however it's come about that they are in desperate need to feed their inner core. Somebody there? Somebody. Who said that? Don't play the innocent with me. You've known all along. Where are you? Follow the cold shiver running down your spine. Here. I don't understand. Did you think it was coincidence? So many good things all happening for you, all for you, Norman. What do you want? To say what you won't, to do what you can't, to remove those in your way. The board members. You killed them. We killed them. We? Remember your little accident in the laboratory? Performance enhancers. Bingo. Me. Your greatest creation. Bringing you what you've always wanted. Power beyond your wildest dreams. And it's only the beginning. There's only one who 
who can stop us. Or imagine if he joined us. <laughs> Which is complete emptiness. And finally, the ultimate goal of this Jezebel spirit is to steal, kill and destroy. And all of these things around that box there, all of these things are pushing in on you, all working together at once. And you can, you can just imagine the torment that people could go through if they're totally surrounded by these emotional control mechanisms and blackmails. And then Jezebel is forming a stronger and stronger tether, soul tie and bond the more you go through this and you become more and more addicted to that you become more and more dependent on that so you'd like to open an account actually what i'd like to know is what would make you happy quitting this job i hate it then do it live your best life you know what i will I'll record an album. I'm thinking an EDM country hybrid. What do you think? I think what would make me happy is a cashier's check for $10 million. Of course, right away. <laughs> and who shall I make it out to? Cash. <laughs> and there you go. Oh! You're the best. Yeah. Now, I need you to wait here. Okay. Say, 30 minutes. Yeah. Then you can leave and never look back. <laughs> Got it? <laughs> Who says money can't buy happiness? Pearl Feck dresses, shocking revelations. The secret's out, the secret's out. And cats on the red carpet. Wow. 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 Fashion's biggest night brought us a lot of surprises. So grab your popcorn and get ready for all the glitz and glamour of the 2023 Met Gala. Invisible enemies. From Bill Muir, a college student finds a pair of glasses which allows him to see demons. It's like the devil is collecting souls and he's got like a zillion ways to do it. He's trying to destroy us. I can see things with them, Dre. Things other people can't see. A number of years ago, I was in a little town, Darjeeling, on the northern boundary of India, where it met Tibet. And there were several visitors from various countries, and the hotel management decided it would be appropriate to give a little entertainment in the Tibetan uh, spirit. So they brought in about a half a dozen Tibetan dancers with their masks and regalia uh, to entertain. And among them was a little boy about eight years old, a very cute chubby little rascal and everyone liked immediately. But when the time for the dance came, <clears throat> he put on one of the most grotesque masks you'd ever want to see. He really was, it looked like a nightmare. And, of course, everyone knew it was the little boy. But during the dance, he started and moved over very rapidly towards the audiences, always getting ready to attack them. And you should have seen the audience scatter. <laughs> they all knew it was a little boy, but with the mask, something happened. And uh, a real spirit of ancient and primary fear moved in on those people. Uh, they actually subconsciously were terrified on another occasion i remember in the japanese no drama where the principal actors are masked many of the themes are highly sacred and in the various performances 
uh, the actors are nearly always concealed behind uh, these wood carved masks that are well painted and decorated but of course have no expression except that of the original carving but under a careful handling of lights particularly by the postures of the head in relationship to the source of light these faces seem to change and in moments of joy the face really seemed to smile and in sorrow the face looked very tragic and yet it was done with a wooden mask but everyone felt it uh, the skill with which the mask was handled was the principal factor in the southwest of the United States we have a series of ritualistic dances by the various Indian tribes the Zunis, Hopis, Navajo these dances often include masked figures and everyone knows that these masked figures are members of the local community one of the men with a mask very carefully developed rather, rather crude mask concealment actually uh, has two children in the audience they all know that it's father but when he dances toward them with a sacred pollen they kneel instinctively as though he was a god something happens when the masks begin to take a part in religious ritual masks were used in Egypt we know in the temple mysteries and even today the various uh, carvings and manuscripts of Egyptian origin show human beings with the masks of birds and animals the Greeks use masks in their theater also nearly always a mask becomes a complete change of personality if accompanied by adequate religious ritual the mask becomes a secret of the development of a peculiar theological belief that there was a divine power in the mask and when it was worn correctly and under ritual supervision it brought a deity into contact with humanity well in the course of time the mask cults have gradually faded but in many primitive countries they still survive then came another step forward in the study of human psychology it is almost impossible for the average person to understand a completely abstract principle it is very hard to visualize something that has no form or to visualize an energy which is completely unembodied from very early times it became apparently necessary to present nearly all of the important truths of life symbolically and in this situation you'd be in complete disarray tossed and turned at every corner by this emotional manipulation so you're getting further and further trapped in this box and there's there's two main ways that this narcissistic spirit thing would work one is through covert manipulation and another is through overt bullying so it could either work through covert manipulation which would be they would wear a mask a cloak of light and it would be to, to everyone else they would seem like the sweetest person ever the nicest person ever the really popular you know all that kind of thing and they would often seem like the victim themselves the Jezebel would make make everyone around it think that it is the victim and you are the bully it's another form of manipulating others perceptions it's all perception deception so the Jezebel gets bigger and bigger and you would get smaller and smaller but what is actually happening is is actually forming a web around you through all of this it's like an emotional maze this is like a, a, an emotional net that is forming around you when you're caught in this and 
you don't cut the tether, this is all being fed in its demonic way. This is a spiritual thing. So it's forming a, an emotional net around you, a web. And there's a very good reason for that because the Jezebel spirit is referred to as the black widow spider that feeds on its own mate. You don't know everything about me. The Avengers weren't my first family. At some point we all have to choose between what the world wants you to be. So you're you're literally. I mean, look how it's it's pretty creepy when you think about it, because it's literally catching you in this web here, and it's a black widow spider that will come to steal, kill, and destroy. So this is dangerous, and not only that, but this is a complete distraction from God, because you're caught in the in the this demonic web and net here, and you need Jesus Christ to set you free. We need Jesus Christ to set us free when we face situations like this because this is a demonic attack and it literally has built the web. You know, like we, we even speak about the, the web of the Antichrist that's growing and certainly in this time we are seeing a rise of this Jezebel spirit behaviour. Uh, so I've written under the Jezebel there, black magic, spell casting and projection. The Jezebel is an illusionist. The Jezebel is a con artist. The narcissist is a con artist, an illusionist. They project an illusion of something they're not. They're wearing a mask, a cloak of light. And it, it's pretty interesting, so I'm told, the word glamour actually goes back to an old English, which is to do with black magic. So... It, is casting love spells, is casting spells. This is a spell cast. This is a wand, it's spell casting you into this trap. It's making you infatuated and addicted to it. You've allowed it permission through the back door, through its covert means, and it has garnered these, this hold on you through its tactics. It's very, very sneaky. So as time goes on in this unhealthy relationship, you see that you you in this relationship shrink and Jezebel increases. She gains more and more control over you through these covert means. And these soul ties are a big part of that, sort of saying, that, you know, making you believe that you need them to survive. You need them, when in actual fact it's the other way around because they're actually, they've got you in their web and feeding off you in that way and emotionally manipulating in that way in so many ways that they make you believe the opposite everything is opposite everything is upside down remember they propagandize themselves like a political agenda like a political party they make you believe the propaganda that comes with it they permit this they permit themselves to cause harm when, when it's someone who is completely consumed by this, they've permitted themselves to cause this harm to you. 
You must tow the party line or all hell will break loose. If you don't comply, if you're in this and you refuse to comply with exactly what all of this is about, if you refuse to comply, then you could have a narcissistic rage on your hands. You could, uh, you could set off a time bomb. So you have to tow the line. You have to tow the political agenda of this entity in order to find any, any sort of security, feeling of security or peace in this paradigm, you have to tow its line and you have to believe its propaganda and you have to comply with what it's doing because it, it, it's all about treating the Jezebel like it's God. The feminine fragrance, Mugler. There, that should do it. I now have everything I want. Everything. Except the identity of Batman. Batman. No doubt Commissioner Gordon is back in his office by now and has probably been trying to call me. Commissioner Gordon's office. Uh, no, the commissioner's not here. Uh, this is Chief of Police O'Hara speaking. May I do something for you? Yes. Go jump in Gotham Park Lake. <laughs> and you're sending an innocent man out to drown himself. Well, look who's here. Bat girl and bat boy. There's no escape, Siren. You'd better give yourself up. We'll soon see about that. That won't do you any good at all. Girls are impervious to your entrancing voice. And I'm wearing bat earplugs that successfully screen out any sound above 14,000 decibels. Your goose, so to speak, is cooked. Not by a long shot short stuff. I now own this building. Is that true, Mr. Wayne? She now owns this building. And I hereby order you off the premises. This is private property and you cannot come in here without a warrant. She has us there, Robin. Holy Fourth Amendment. So if you'll just make yourself scarce, I won't have to report you to the police. This way out. Come on, Batgirl. But there must be We're some... licked. You'll pay a pretty price for this, Siren. Let's get this thing over with. What are you going to do with him? Bruce Wayne, that penniless fop. Now that he has no fortune, he's going to do what many other bankers in his position have done. He's going to leap off the roof. I'm going to leap off the roof. Good boy. So when it's got you in this web, when when it's got you trapped in this uh, in its safety box, what is the next agenda? What it, what is it that Jezebel wants then? Is it satisfied with that? No. Because the Jezebel wants admiration from legions of people. It isn't true love. This isn't a true love paradigm. It's a very unhealthy, mentally sick paradigm uh, that's been created here. So it's not about your, you being the true love of the Jezebel. It's about keeping you in the safety box and then it goes to the legions of other people. If, it, if the person is truly being controlled by the Jezebel spirit, then they will want more attention. They've got their supply from you, that's built them up, great. They've got their little lifeline there, going to your little box in the web, and then they want to turn to the legions of other people for further feeding, further attention. And again, this is a form of witchcraft. Remember, this is black magic and spell casting and projection. 
This is psychic vampirism. This is about the cloak of light. So they want to be looked, for example, look, look, but don't touch. Look at me, but don't touch. They want to be admired. They want attention. They want to be drooled over. They want worship. It's a sense of grandiosity. They want further validation. They've got you in the safety box and now they want validation from others. They, they want people to think you can't have me. They want to dangle themselves and for others to, to, to want them, but they can't have them. Can a man say a woman is a tractor without it being a come on? All right, all right. Let's just say, just for the sake of argument, that it was a come on. What do you want me to do about it? I take it back, okay? I take it back. You can't take it back. Why not? Because it's already out there. Oh, geez, what are we supposed to do? Call the cops, it's already out there. Just let it lie okay great let it lie that's my policy that's what i always say let it lie want to spend a night in a motel see what i did i didn't let it lie harry i said i would and then i didn't harry i went the other way harry what we are just going to be friends okay great friends <laughs> it's the best thing you realize of course that we could never be friends why not what I'm saying is, and this is not a come on in any way, shape, or form, is that men and women can't be friends because the sex part always gets in the way. That's not true. I have a number of men friends and there is no sex involved. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You only think you do. You're saying I'm having sex with these men without my knowledge? No, what I'm saying is they all want to have sex with you. They do not. Do too. They do not. Do too. How do you know? Because no man can be friends with a woman that he finds attractive. He always wants to have sex with her. So you're saying that a man can be friends with a woman he finds unattractive? No, you pretty much want to nail him, too. What if they don't want to have sex with you? Doesn't matter, because the sex thing is already out there, so the friendship is ultimately doomed, and that is the end of the story. Well, I guess we're not going to be friends, then. Guess not. That's too bad. You were the only person that I knew in New York. Because they've got a partner. But that doesn't excuse uh, seeking to be yearned after in that way. They want to be wanted. They want a narcissistic supply from the legions of people. They want to engage in psychic vampirism. They want to feed off of that attention. This is demonic activity, using people, using this person as a shell, as a puppet, literally just using them like a puppet. <laughs>
Maybe the old warehouse? You're not wearing your vest. Do I really need to? Do it now. Or get out of my school. So you're behind this? I'm the choreographer. Do you expect me to talk? No, my dear. I expect you to dance. So what this ends up as is the the person or you stuck in this net sees that their attention, the attention that should be given to you, that you deserve in a mutual relationship, the love and attention you deserve in a mutual relationship, a hundred, a hundred between you both. This attention that she should be giving you is going, is being dispersed in some spectrum to the legions of other people. And what does that do? That further adds to you, the self-doubt of the person who's trapped. That further adds to the low self-esteem. Why am I not good enough for this Jezebel? Why am I not good enough for this person I'm in a relationship with or a marriage with? So then that further adds to the spiral, the downward spiral of being undermined, having insecurity, low self-esteem, losing yourself to them and push and pull because, you know, they, they, they go hot on you, they, go, they idealize you, then they discard you by going somewhere else and you witness all of that. I can't keep this up. Oh, yes, you can. That little costume of yours responds to my every command. I've seen this technology before. Of course you have. Because he sent you, didn't he? Well, you can come with us. It'll show him I mean business this time. I'm sorry it has to be this way. But I have no choice. He's cut me off. You're the only way I can get to him and teach him a lesson. One last practice run. And then, we can embark on our mission of mercy, my darlings! Dance, my darlings! Shrené! 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 Mevlevi order was outlawed in 1925 and is still technically illegal. But the right to perform the Semmer ritual was reinstated in 1954. Turkey's whirling dervishes ritual is such a rare treasure that it is one of UNESCO's masterpieces of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity. You look like you're having So it, it all ties in to this energy grid. And what are they stuck in? This giant web of a black widow spider that comes to steal, kill and destroy its mate. And some, do some still think this isn't spiritual? Is this even possible on a human level to this extent? And the ultimate thing is of why it's spiritual too is because once that this person sadly is stuck here, once you are stuck there, you cannot really even see God anymore because you are surrounded by demons and you've given permission, you've allowed yourself, even unknowingly, subconsciously, to 
open gateways for this to happen. It won't change. Pray for the person, but you need to get out. You need to sever this tie. You need to sever it. Because this person, if they are an all-out Jezebel spirit, if they are controlled by that, then the, the whole thing that you fell in love with in the first place was a mirage in the desert. It was never real. It was just a projection. And I know that that, is, that can be so, so painful to realise and to, to process in your mind that, that what you fell in love with was a lie. And it wasn't even really them. Yeah. Is everything in place? The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. You can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave. What's your problem? Yo, I'm a paparazzi. I don't play no Yahtzee. I go pop, 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 pop. My camera's up your crotch. If you want to be a drag queen and your parents don't let you, you need new parents. If you want to be a drag queen and your friends don't let you, you need new friends. Super pumped, I'm gonna, pr I'm gonna walk the runway and I'm gonna vogue. Virgin voguing, because he's been taking voguing classes. Okay. With uh, Gerard X. Reyes, who's fantastic. He's doing first time in drags at a ball. <laughs> For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Oh, you see, I take these glasses off. She looks like a regular person, doesn't she, huh? Put them back on from Maldehyde face. Old man river, that old man river. You know, you look like your head fell on the cheese dip back in 1957. The Matrix is a computer-generated dream world built to keep us under control in order to change a human being into this. Drag Queen Story Hour. This one is called Worm Loves Worm. Talking, singing, and reading. We can both be grooms. To an audience of preschoolers, toddlers, and their caregivers. The hips on the drag queen go swish, 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 swish. I'm a girl. Stop. Let me out. Let me out. I want to look at him. They're everywhere. Now oh, hold on. You ain't the first son of a bitch to wake up out of their dream. The day my water broke, I was recording Jessica Rabbit. No. I don't believe it. It's not possible. What you need, you need a Brazilian plastic surgeon. I've got one that can see. Are you listening to me, Neil? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? I was look again. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. But 
now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner. With such an one know not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. The gains have been substantial, both for ourselves and for you, the human, power, elite. You have given us entree to the resources we need in our ongoing quest for multidimensional expansion. You still don't get it, do you boys? There ain't no countries anymore. No more good guys. They're running the whole show. They own everything. Uh, he's a tall Caucasian male. Doesn't appear armed. Wearing sunglasses. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Over the horizon. Over the horizon.